Yes, we fixed it from the we the technician fixed it. Yeah. So okay. okay. Great. Thank you. So we're ready to start, I think, and I think maybe also because uh, this is a special uh, technology with this webinar, that things can get a little bit uh, complicated, and we are also being live streamed uh, to YouTube. Uh, but we're ready to start, and I want to start uh, by uh, telling everybody that exactly one month ago we woke up to the news of the Russian war in Ukraine. Many of us uh, have felt the anger and feeling of not being able to do anything. We heard here in Sweden that supporting the job of humanitarian organizations is all we can do for now. But this picture changed as soon as we started calling and emailing our partner local governments in Ukraine. We at the Swedish International Center for Local uh, Democracy support municipal partnerships. They are city to city learning in 15 countries, including Ukraine. We call Timothy, we call our partners in Lviv, in Berislav, in Nikolaev, the Association of Local Governments, and receive the same answer. This is not the time to hope for the best and leave them alone. The opposite. It is the time to strengthen the partnerships at all levels, to listen and to continue the conversations. This message from the local government was clear. Everybody can do something. This message struck our hearts and our minds, and we quickly mobilized all our efforts to organize this panel as a first step. Local governments in Ukraine are at the front line. And while you imagine that local democracy is the last thing to bother right now, it is the quite opposite. They have to be transparent in their efforts to leave no one behind and to be accountable to their citizens. Two days ago, the mayor of the city of Berislav was kidnapped by the Russian army. His city has a partnership with the region of Gotland here in Sweden. They had been partners for many years. So of course, that also broke our hearts, uh, but we quickly saw how local government here in Sweden mobilized quickly to send a bus to support their peers there and to make many, many other efforts. I know many local governments are doing many things to help and I hope this panel will help us to better understand their perspectives and what we can do. As the director of ICLD's Knowledge Center, I put myself at your service for anything we can do. Knowledge give the means to distinguish right from wrong to prevent many more wars here in Ukraine, in Syria, and many other countries. We are grateful for Malmo University Student Association of Foreign Affairs and the Local Government Information Unit in the UK to join this initiative. So with these words, I would like to give the floor to Timothy, who will moderate uh, this panel. Welcome, Timothy, and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ana Maria, for your very kind and touching words. Thank you for the solidarity and thank you uh, all of you who have joined us online. My name is Timothy Brick. I am assistant professor at Kyiv School of Economics. In 2021, uh, we launched a new laboratory, a new center for sociological research to study specifically decentralization and local development in Ukraine. We collaborated with many uh, foreign partners, including Federal Ministry of Education and Research in Germany, GIZ ULEAD, and of course, ICLD. And the reason why we created this laboratory is because scholars and researchers and policymakers in Ukraine, we all believe that decentralization was one of the most crucial and most successful reforms in Ukraine launched in 2015. Uh, due to decentralization, a lot of local communities have seen uh, major developments. Uh, we've noticed uh, that local communities became able to register new businesses, to collect more taxes, to spend on welfare more wisely. Also, our sociological data shows that the trust to local authorities increased dramatically. And the satisfaction with local services also increased dramatically. And I believe that this is a part of explanation of what is happening right now. This surprising resistance in Ukraine can be partially explained by the historical developments of decentralization that so many Ukrainians became very active 
responsible and satisfied citizens of their local communities that right now they are not going to give up on, on them, on their territories, on their land. And today we want to discuss the role of uh, local communities and local uh, mayors, local governors in details. We have invited a distinguished panel. I will introduce all speakers one by one, and then um, they will provide their opening statements for three, five minutes. After that, we will be open for your questions and we will moderate the discussion. So first, the introduction. Today, we are very honored to have Kristina Leviska. She is the deputy director of Department of Humanitarian Policy, a city of Kamenets Podilsky. She is also a project leader of a partnership with the city Meirestad in Sweden. We also have Uliana Park. She is elected city councillor in Lviv. She is one of the participants of the international training program for women, uh, for women political leaders organized by ICLD. We also have Valentina Poltavets. She is the ex uh, executive director of the Ukrainian Association of Amalgamated Territorial Communities. Jana Brovdi, officer, Council of European Municipalities and Regions. Maria Tyshenko, PhD. She is associate professor at Kyiv National Economic University. Right now, she is in Malmo. We are also honored to have Tamila Lankina. She is a very famous uh, scholar of um, Russian society and Russian history, and in general, uh, the region um, of uh, you know, Russian Empire and post Soviet region. And she works at London School of Economics. And we have Jonathan Carvest. He is Chief Executive, Local Government Information Unit, LGIU. So uh, I will pass the word first to Kristina Leviska, and I will ask you to make your opening statements for three to five minutes and describe what, what do you see on the ground? Yeah, what, what is the role which uh, local communities and local governments and people like you play on the ground? What, is, uh, what are the main challenges and what things do you need most? Christina, please. Yeah, thank you everybody for invitation, for reception. Uh, it's a great honor for me to be in this company of such people. And uh, I'm a representative of Kamenets Podilsky City Council. Kamenets Podilsky is a peaceful touristic and culture center of Western Ukraine. Ми завжди мали дуже багато туристів в нашому місті. Ми третій за, можливо, так сказати, після Києва і Львова за пам'ятки. I think, sorry, Christina, to interrupt you, but I think you have to speak in English because we are also on YouTube and in the YouTube channel there is no uh, translation only for those here. Okay, Thank sure. You. So we're one of the touristic and culture center of the western part of Ukraine. It means, and we always had a lot of tourist people, but, but for now we are center of population. And all our local initiatives and local services are directed to support all the refugees people who came to our city. For now, I will uh, attend some. Uh, I will. Uh, I will attend some uh, numerous of uh, refugees which we have in our city. You can imagine, but uh, you can imagine that the population of our city is one hundred thousand people. For now, we accept almost 20, 25,000 of refugees. So you can imagine the loading of overloading of our city for all our local services. 
uh, and we try to do all our best to accommodate all the people. And to provide free food for them. Uh, our city is really overloaded. All our dormitories of our local buildings, all local buildings, uh, everything is overloaded and full of people. And only with the help of our partner cities, of our European cities partners. With all the humanitarian aid, We are able to provide everything that, uh, that, our, that refugees need. Uh, so the, uh, the first and the most important challenge for our city council is to support all our international connections. to create new branches of such part of connections. Because we are responsible for those people who came to our city. And we couldn't refuse them in any real needs. So we accumulate all our forces. to provide everything we could do in this situation. And the most, mm, the most urgent thing, the most awful things we see, it's not the people, but the eyes of the people who came to our city. Yeah, Christina, sorry to interrupt you. I assume, uh, but the you... eyes, with their eyes, the whole empty in their eyes. Yeah. So I assume you talk with some delays because you are waiting so we for apply, translation. Uh, we apply to every country, to every city, to help us in this struggle. To help these people. To avoid this emptiness in their eyes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Christina, for your opening statement. I also assume that you're talking with some delays because you, uh, you care about translation, but don't worry, the translation is uh, simultaneous. Uh, I just wanted to ask one very concrete question to Christina. Maybe you have knowledge what kind of support you need right now from international partners or Ukrainian government, maybe food, shelter, money, medicine, whatever. Is there anything you need right now to, to be delivered to you? We try uh, every day to renew our list of needs because every day is uh, a new challenge for us. So for example, in the first place, we need a lot of clothes for people who came. Now we are full of clothes, but we need food, hygienic products and medicine. And also we want to supply as good as we possible and with the help of our country, of other countries is to provide our army, our territorial defenses. So we try to renew the list every day because we need renews every day. Mm -hmm. I see. And we apply to with with uh, with list to all our volunteer center, to our city partners, to our twin city, and to all humanitarian organizations. And thanks for everybody who helped us really in this situation. I see. Thank you. Thank you, Christina, for your answers. And uh, uh, we can also talk with uh, Uliana Park. She uh, represents Lviv, and Lviv also has become a major city to welcome many displaced people. And I think we all are wondering, how, how are you? How are you holding up? And what kind of uh, uh, needs and immediate support do you need? Please. Hello. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, do you hear me well? 
Thank you very much. Today we greet Slava Ukraini, Heroem Slava. So it means glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes. Every day we say to each other and we support all uh, people, uh, all our soldiers, all our people. So first of all, I want to say uh, to people who are from um, different countries that uh, yesterday we had awful number of 121 child who were killed by Russian, by Russia. So it is not just war. Uh, I want you to know that it is not just war, it's like genocide of Ukrainian people because they uh, fight, they uh, bump uh, living houses, they um, bump places where people hide and it is written children near those theater, near theater in uh, Mariupol which was bombed. So, it was for the beginning, and I thank you very much that we are talking today about Ukraine. As about our uh, local government, uh, now we have a special law by which we have military administration. As I am city councillor, so it is elected position. Now my city council didn't gather for a month of war. Because now all um, main responsibilities are in um, military administration, as well, our city executive bodies support uh, military administration to provide all these responsibilities. But all those people who work in executive bodies of Lviv City Council, they continue to do their everyday work we are talking about education. Now our kids uh, are start, studying by, do, by Zoom. Uh, so we are talking about medicine. We are talking about infrastructure. Even we are talking about waste. So uh, my city is uh, 50 kilometers from Polish border. It is a little bit, yeah, it is calmer than in uh, other cities, so we have just uh, uh, thanks God, it was bombed uh, our region a few times, but uh, mostly uh, we feel here safer and um, a lot of refugees come to our city for first five days. Uh, they are located in our city and then we decide if they want to stay in Ukraine. So we relocate them to our region, to smaller cities, villages, or when they want to move to uh, Europe, we support those people to uh, cross the border and then to find safe place uh, somewhere in Europe. Uh, so our city is... Um, center for logistics today for refugees for humanitarian support and we as deputies became volunteers so mostly every day we communicate with journalists we uh, support people who call us uh, all the time today uh, one family from who moved um, to poland asked to uh, send special medicine from Ukraine because they uh, lost this medicine while, while they were moving. So we today we will help to unpack humanitarian aid. Uh, we will help refugees uh, with all they need. Uh, we will, uh, with uh, my friends, we will uh, make special nets for soldiers. So every day you may find a place where uh, every person who live in our city may help. And like ordinary people, we support uh, Ukraine, we support our army, we support our people. So, uh, and even we have to be example. Yeah, and we thank all these mayors um, in uh, uh, Mariupol, Melitopol, in, uh, we talked about, uh, 
uh, cities where uh, mayors Bereslav, Dniprorudnes, Kadovsk, Melitopol, where uh, mayors were kidnapped. Why did Russia do that? Because uh, these people are example for um, their citizens. So they support Ukraine, they are Ukrainian, they want to live in Ukrainian cities. And you know, uh, citizens become stronger when they have leader who show the way, who um, uh, tells what they have to do. So usually uh, we need those people who don't afraid, who um, will help uh, other people who are afraid, who don't know what to do, who will show um, the way, yeah. So uh, thank you, thank you very much. And if you have some, and as about you asked, as about what we need, what support we need, um, I, 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 I have read about that. I should tell three, three things uh, what we should tell. So first thing is information. So uh, we should ask our uh, partners to spread information all over the world, spread the truth about Ukraine. People should not stop talking about Ukraine, about this war, talking, thinking, supporting the first, if the first. The second one is politician. We ask to make pressure on your governments to um, uh, press Russia with sanctions, with breaking of economic routes, with stop businesses, it works. Maybe not in a short time, but it work. And uh, support Ukraine every day. And the third one is humanitarian aid and medicine, what we need. We need everything. We, we need food. We need medicine a lot. Uh, we need um, safety for our soldiers. Go, uh, they even don't have enough these safety ballots. Uh, and as well, yes, uh, we need weapon. We, uh, I know that yesterday we um, uh, got uh, five thousands of weapon anti-tank from Sweden. So we thank very much because uh, our soldiers from day to day uh, became stronger and we um, uh, listened to news and watch news. And yes, yes yesterday they um, uh, fighted seven airplanes, day before yesterday, six. So thank you very much with this support we became stronger. And you know, I wanted to say that we have very uh, interesting and uh, book uh, about Ukrainian uh, history in uh, English, um, which was wrote, uh, written by a um, um, professor of one of the American universities, Serhi Plohi. The name of that book is Gate of Europe. And yes, Ukraine today is gate of Europe. So um, all the Euro, all Europe support us not to open this gate of Russian war, of Russian aggression. So we thank you very much. But today our soldiers fight not only for, for Ukraine, they fight for whole Europe and for the whole world. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Uliana. Very inspirational words, and um, I cannot add anything. Um, I will just pass the floor to Valentina. As uh, Uliana just said, you know, we, we need leadership, we need examples from other mayors. And Valentina, she, uh, she represents the whole association of amalgamated territorial communities, and we are very honored to have her. And uh, Valentina, please, uh, we will be Happy to listen to your opening statements, also three to five minutes. Thank you. And Jana, would you help us then with the translation? Yes? Okay, great. Yes. Так, Валентино, uh, прошу. Так. Um, шановні друзі, колеги, вітаю вас всіх від імені нашої асоціації. Ми об'єднуємо більше 600 територіальних громад 
І як ми говорили завжди, що це є в Україні нове місцеве самоврядування, яке народилося і яке зміцнювалося впродовж останніх восьми років реформи децентралізації і реформи місцевого самоврядування в Україні. Dear friends, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the association um, and we actually represent uh, 600 municipalities uh, in Ukraine and we are also the result of this new wave of, uh, of, the, of the local self-government that has been happening in our country since the start of the decentralization uh, reform. І тому можна сказати, що сьогодні в Україні місцеве самоврядування демонструє е, в умовах війни таку е, силу, е, мабуть, як і наша е, армія, але на своєму фронті. And therefore, I think we can actually say that today local government in Ukraine is demonstrating um, a similar level of power um, and capacities as our soldiers uh, are also demonstrating in the fight. І також це підтверджує, що е, наш європейський вибір, е, наше прагнення до е, демократичних цінностей, до побудови нашої країни на демократичних цінностях, це не лише якісь мрії, а це є дійсно е, наше вже реальне, е, реальне життя і реальна країна. And this only proves that our... European, uh, our Europeanness, um, our European values, uh, these are already reality um, on the ground uh, in Ukraine. Ну і хочу сказати, що це є наш природній дух, такий свободолюбства і незламності, який сьогодні демонструє вся Україна. And this is actually a sort of our, our really soul, our inner nature of resisting and not giving up um, uh, of freedom that this is, the whole country is demonstrating at the moment. І що робить сьогодні місцеве самоврядування в Україні? Звичайно, відповідно до військового стану виконує ті функції по забезпеченню мешканців необхідними послугами. And what is the, actually the local government doing now in Ukraine? Um, well, yes, we are in a special situation uh, in, in the times of war, and the local government is doing everything possible in order to, um, uh, to provide the basic necessary services to the people. Але одночасно допомагає кожна громада, допомагає армії, допомагає теробороні, створено спільні з органами місцевого самоврядування, волонтерські штаби в кожній громаді. But at the same time, apart from providing the services, the usual services, we are also helping our army, we are, as a local government, we are also helping the territorial uh, defense forces and a special coordination centers have been uh, created in, uh, in all of the communities. Але треба розуміти, що всі громади в Україні знаходяться в різних умовах, і я б назвала такі ну, три, три, три зони. But at the same time, we have to understand that the local government is operating under special conditions. Um, so I would actually uh, speak about the three main uh, areas. Uh, і десь біля 200 громад знаходяться сьогодні в окупації. І там... Uh, не кругом є можливість надавати е, необхідні послуги, є розрушена інфраструктура і там уже гуманітарна криза. Um, unfortunately, but 200 of our communities have already uh, have been occupied by the uh, Russian troops and infrastructure is destroyed there um, and uh, services, it's impossible to provide services there at the moment um, and it's a real humanitarian uh, catastrophe. Але, як говорила пані Уляна, там наші лідери громад, наші мери під прицілом окупантів, тому що дійсно навколо них гуртуються мешканці територіальних громад. And there really our mayors, our local leaders um, are at risk, um, at great risk um, 
but at the same time, um, the people, uh, the normal people, their residents, the locals are actually uniting around the uh, mayors and around local leaders to support uh, to support them. І лише б є поодинокі приклади того, що мери якось усунулися або пішли на колаборацію із окупантами. And I must say that actually there are only a few single cases where the mayors would uh, step down or even less uh, uh, cases where the mayors would actually agree to cooperate with the uh, occupation or Russian occupation forces. Але громади тут же виходили, мешканці громад виходили і демонстрували, що Купінськ це Україна, що кожна громада це Україна і там не раді російському окупанту. But everywhere, uh, including in Kupiansk, the people would go out on the streets and clearly demonstrate um, that they are not uh, happy, they are not welcoming, and they are against the uh, occupation by the Russian forces. Але ці громади, які окуповані, які до яких важко сьогодні довести ліки, продукти і Дуже багато громад дійсно стираються з, з лиця землі їхні будинки, школи, лікарні. І навіть е, прохання, які ми отримуємо з цих територій, передати, мені важко це говорити, ліки, е, які переривають вагітність. Бо дуже багато зґвалтувань на цих територіях. But the, the, the situation in, uh, in a lot of these territories, a lot of these communities is very dire, is very difficult. It's, um, they're needing food, they're needing uh, medical medicines, um, um, which are very difficult to get to them. Their uh, kindergartens, their schools, their hospitals are being destroyed. And uh, it's very difficult for me to say this, but when they are asking us to send medicine, um, they are asking us to actually send the, the um, the, the, the medicine that, um, the pills that can stop pregnancies, because what's happening actually that there are also rapes uh, of women by the Russian soldiers in the occupied uh, territories. And this has, this has results in women wanting to, um, want, needing this medicine to, to stop, uh, to stop pregnancies. Дійсно, окупант буде притягнути до відповідальності за ті жахливі злочини. And the occupational forces will be held accountable and bring brought to justice for this the crimes that they are now committing. Ну, і хочу сказати, що друга частина громад це ті, які допомагають в евакуації мешканців, які допомагають військовим госпіталям, допомагають теробороні розміщують мешканців переселених і вже більше 10 мільйонів в західних областях розміщено наших переселенців із зони бойових дій. So the second pool of communities are those that are actually accepting a lot of uh, uh, internally displaced uh, people, um, welcoming them, uh, providing food, providing shelter, uh, but at the same time also are helping the territorial uh, uh, defense forces uh, and, uh, and the army. Тому якщо говорити про допомогу, то я одразу скажу, що ми вже вдячні за ту величезну підтримку, яку ми отримуємо від європейських країн і всього світу. If we are to speak about help, I would first of all like to think about uh, the help that we've already received from the European Union countries, but also from, um, from the world. Тому дійсно вдячні за те, що приймає, даєте прихисток нашим жінкам, дітям, за велику гуманітарну допомогу харчами, ліками, всім необхідним, ну і звичайно, підтримка нашої армії. We are grateful first of all for providing shelter and help to our women and children uh, that are fleeing the war. We are grateful for humanitarian uh, aid that is uh, that you are sending and we are also grateful for your support of the Ukrainian army. 
Але якщо говорити про перспективу, то звичайно, що, мабуть, наступні наші розмови, і дуже сподіваємося, що в найближчий час вони будуть про відбудову наших громад, наших сіл, міст і про відновлення миру і мирного життя в Україні. But I really hope that very soon uh, we will be able to speak about the reconstruction of our villages, of our towns, of our municipalities and about the peace and also uh, future and prosperity of the country. І також ми дуже сподіваємося, як казала пані Уляна, що ніхто не втомиться uh, говорити про те, хто агресор і що санкції не повинні зняти ні, ні, ні в який найближчий час, а тільки посилювати їх. And we truly hope, uh, as was already said by uh, uh, Ms. Ulyana before, that uh, people will not stop uh, uh, talking about uh, who is the real aggressor here, uh, the Russian Federation, and then the sanctions uh, are not going to be softened, are not going to be uh, removed. Бо ця інформаційна і така психологічна підтримка, вона теж надзвичайно важлива. Because the information support, the psychological support are also very important. Дякую. Дякую вам, Валентино. Це, звісно, ви говорили про трагічні речі, але ви закінчили на такій ноті про відбудову і про продовження боротьби. Ви для мене рольова модель. Буду з вас брати приклад. Дякую, uh, uh, Валентина. Unfortunately, we don't have much time left. We have about 20 minutes, so I will try to, uh, well, to moderate uh, our conversation uh, and intervene a bit. So we have talked with uh, representatives of uh, Ukrainian local consuls, and now we can also talk with experts and um, ask their opinions about what is uh, happening. Uh, by experts, I mean policy researchers or historians and uh, whatever. And I see some questions in the chat uh, about uh, the international organizations, international NGOs, uh, about their role in supporting Ukraine and providing humanitarian aid. And I wanted to forward this question to Jana. Jana, perhaps you can comment on the role of the transnational uh, local networks. Um, indeed, thank you very much uh, for, um, for passing me the floor. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I speak here today uh, on behalf of the Council of European Municipalities and Regions for those who might not know uh, about the CMR. So we are, um, we are an uh, organization that unites um, associations of local and regional governments from all over European Union, but also outside of the European Union. So in case of Ukraine, the two associations, the Association of Ukrainian Cities and also Association of local and, um, and uh, district councils is also our, our members. Um, and uh, we are based in Brussels and the part of our work is really advocating um, every, all the important priorities, uh, issues of the local governments here in front of the European institutions. But also we are working on uh, being a platform for exchange of experience, knowledge, information among our members, uh, uh, associations, and, and also helping them to uh, help their uh, members. And uh, to, uh, today during, the, uh, uh, during this meeting, I already saw in the participants list a lot of our, um, our member organizations, SALAR, uh, Network of Association of Local Authorities of Southeast Europe, and they are themselves doing a lot of things um, as well on the ground, uh, also in Ukraine. Um, so I hope that they will also be able to uh, intervene uh, during the Q&A and also speak about their great things that they are doing now also in Ukraine. When it comes to Ukraine, Ukraine, I think the, for us it was easy uh, for CMR because we already were working on the ground in Ukraine. Um, first of all, through the project called Bridges of Trust, uh, that uh, uh, was we uh, created 10 new partnerships between uh, municipalities in Ukraine and 10 uh, uh, in, so it's twinning between the Uh, between EU and the Ukrainian municipalities last year. Um, so we were working there and, uh, and uh, we, when the war started, uh, um, well, rather when the invasion started because the war started already in 2014, um, we uh, had a direct contact to the mayors uh, and, uh, in Ukraine um, and um, 
we were very much aware from the already day one and um, about the kind of needs and what was happening um, on the ground uh, where we could get in touch because some of the municipalities, uh, Ukrainian municipalities, unfortunately, that uh, are part of our project, um, they were they are occupied, such as Henichesk and Kachovka, for example. So unfortunately, very difficult to was very difficult for us to get in touch uh, with them. Uh, we exchanged some messages via Viber and other platforms, but it's anyways very difficult. And and, uh, and from the very, uh, it, it became very clear to us very soon that the, there is in, in need did of humanitarian aid, uh, food, long-lasting food, medicines. But most of all, also the mayors were very much asking about provision of the of the uh, protective equipment, helmets, uh, uh, bulletproof vests for their territorial defense, which is a bit uh, very difficult maybe to comprehend also for the local governments in the EU that would like to help. But this was one of the requests that was really coming from the local ground in Ukraine. Please help us to, um, to provide the necessary equipment for the territorial defense forces to, uh, to help, uh, to, um, to protect. Also, what was very clear from us, from the very, uh, from the also in the conversations with the mayors and the uh, and their deputies, because mayors sometimes didn't have time even for this and still don't have time, um, was the fact that um, it some of them really preferred direct material help rather than even sending financial call because it was just very difficult for them to buy certain things uh, in the country that they needed, so they really preferred. Uh, some of them, uh, their uh, partners in the EU, to call them directly to ask what is needed in the specific uh, municipality. Um, they would share the list, and then the EU municipality, EU partner, would set, would purchase the necessary um, the necessary equipment or the necessary medicines, specific medicines that are needed in a specific uh, municipality, and then send this medicine, this equipment, to the Polish border, for example, um, as many of our our Lithuanian municipalities did, or Polish municipalities that are part of our project, of the CMR project, Bridges of Trust. And then the Ukrainian mayors would send the car, the lorries to the Polish border and pick it up. And this was a very speedy and, and fast way of delivering the urgent humanitarian aid that the municipalities needed. So a direct contact between mayors, um, uh, discussion of the needs and the logistics. And in this way, within just a few days, an aid could be delivered uh, from, from a, a town in, in, in EU to uh, a Ukrainian municipality. Um, so this is the first thing that we try to, uh, to put in place through the Bridges of Trust, so really the direct linkages and mobilization of aid from uh, a municipality in the EU that are partners, our partners in the project to the municipality in Ukraine. But also as the CMR, we took a, a lot of other uh, actions, so the, in the very first days we also uh, uh, issued a statement of support uh, of Ukraine and Ukrainian local governments uh, that was uh, signed by more than 760 uh, uh, local and regional authorities, mayors uh, around the EU, but also um, in the UK and in other countries outside of the EU, also in um, southeastern Europe, uh, for example. And uh, we've also set, uh, put together a task force on Ukraine uh, in order for our associations to really come to this task force regularly, exchange what they are currently doing, um, reinforce each other's actions on Ukraine, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and put together resources that, where they can in order to be even more efficient at providing help to uh, Ukraine and to the Ukrainian municipalities, but also helping, um, uh, helping those, those municipalities in the EU that are uh, accepting the uh, uh, in, uh, the displaced people from from Ukraine. We've also uh, uh, been working on rather on um, on distributing information about what's happening in Ukraine. This is very important, as was said here before. Information warfare and Russian propaganda is actually continuing to operate um, and will continue to do to do so, and will become more and more uh, uh, nasty, trying to prove uh, that uh, that it was uh, not Russia attacking a cert certain uh, a hospital in Mariupol. That's why we set up actually a newsletter on Ukraine for uh, for our members, in which we. We 
uh, first of all inform uh, our associations uh, and their members all around the EU and outside of the European Union about the needs of Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian local authorities of our association of Ukrainian cities and other associations. What are their current needs? What they are working on? What kind of help do they need? Um, there we talk about initiatives such as uh, uh, please close the sky by the mayors and the local uh, authorities in U all over Ukraine asking to close the sky for example, uh, but also specific medical or other needs that they have. Um, and also we present initiatives in this newsletter uh, by the in the EU uh, member states and uh, outside of the EU uh, by our associations, uh, as well as by their members of our associations. And this newsletter comes out once, uh, uh, once per month and hopefully will also be translated into Ukrainian in the in the coming time and will also be shared in Ukraine in order to show Ukrainian local governments that the European uh, municipalities, U European associations of local and regional governments are also uh, are very uh, are supporting and continue to support and having a lot of different initiatives in order to support um, Ukraine. Um, uh, and Diana, we, please, uh, we, we need to wrap up. So you... Yes, sorry. And then on a final note, I think what's important work as well that we are doing is a political work, meaning that we are mobilizing um, uh, secretary generals, directors, and mayors uh, all over the EU when it comes to, uh, for example, statements of support of the mayors when they are kidnapped. Uh, we issue release statements uh, as well as any other um, um, statements that need to be released and that Association of Ukrainian Cities, for example, asks us in order to intensify, amplify their voices and, and their messaging in the EU. This is also what we are doing as the as the Council of European Municipalities and, and Regions. So thank you very much and, and sorry if I was a little bit long. No, thank you. Thank you very much for information. And it also echoed to what, uh, for instance, uh, Uliana was saying, yeah, that information is crucial and uh, uh, it is very important to emphasize it. So I hope that everyone who is listening will follow your links and your um, your booklets and the mailing list and everything. Uh, so we have about five minutes and three speakers. So I will ask uh, three speakers to be very short and maybe provide some bullet point statements to emphasize uh, what you need to say. We will start with Maria. Um, she is very experienced and uh, yeah, Maria, please. Uh, Thank tell you us very what much. Uh, I'm representative of NGO Buruj and uh, I'm mentor of International Center for Local Democracy in Sweden. And um, uh, actually, we took part uh, in the um, stabilization pass uh, in uh, Donbass. So we have experience of it, experience uh, working with communities. And uh, what is uh, uh, the main point that we should divide budgets? Uh, we should divide budgets because right now we have budgets for the war and we should divide budgets for the war, for security, for defense, uh, for humanitarian mission and to the services. So uh, thanks uh, to our partners from Sweden uh, and uh, from EU countries, uh, US countries, uh, we can survive our economy. And um, you talked about the information that we need. So. Uh, our organization, for example, in Geoporuch, we cooperate with state service of special communication and information protection. And what is needed, this is technical support, not money, but technical support to such structures, which provide internet connection, uh, which provide telephone communication. And uh, that's, that's why we have Ukrainian TV, not Russian. But yes, really, in occupied territories, we don't have uh, already Ukrainian uh, uh, information. And uh, right now, uh, uh, our gov government, local government, this is actually a democracy in action. And yesterday, uh, for example, I'm, I'm right now in Malmo, a city where, uh, where I uh, studied, and uh, we organize hosting of uh, uh, 43 pers persons with disabilities. And what, what is it very important that pay attention uh, as Valentina told, to women, because it's violence, uh, it's war, it's the second phase is uh, violence against women mostly, and to people, uh, vulnerable groups, we, we should pay attention to vulnerable groups. And we are hosting right now in Malmo, uh, 43 persons with disabilities. So um, uh, I, uh, I hope that uh, such uh, um, institutions as uh, NGOs, 
uh, we should cooperate and we actually with Valentina, we cooperate uh, so good uh, and uh, have really good results uh, in Lugansk, especially uh, Oblast. And um, for example, it was question about international organizations. Uh, to tell the truth, international uh, organizations are waiting for stabilization for us. But uh, uh, in fact, we have a very active fast. And uh, um, we need already UN missions in Ukraine uh, with different uh, kind of support because uh, uh, we have different areas. And uh, we can say that some communities is under attack, some communities affected. Uh, uh, affected, uh, some communities uh, still continue their work. Uh, so uh, we can we can do sorry uh, we we can we can and we should do all possible and impossible. And what is important and it's including uh, networking because you to have a partners from US, you to have a partners from Poland. We we finally uh, meet these people from Kharkiv yesterday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for being brief. Uh, Tamila. Uh, we don't hear you, but I can continue. Uh, sorry, sorry. I had... We don't hear you, Timofey. So thank you, Maria. And maybe Tamila can also provide her bullet points. Thank you very much. Uh, I will be brief as well. It's a great pleasure for me to, to, to be uh, part of this forum. I'm a member of the ICLD. And so when Anna Maria reached out to me and, and asked me as a kind of expert on the region, what we can do to help, I was very excited to be able to kind of participate and contribute in some way. And I really hope that these conversations and this network that we are now forming as we speak will, will be lasting and will have a very important role in sort of the months and years to come. I'll, have, I'll limit myself to three bullet points about uh, my local government uh, and how I understand. I'm an expert on uh, mostly Russian politics, but I've done some work on Ukraine as well. And I actually started off ri writing and researching local government. You know, that's what that was at a time in the 1990s where most when most people were interested in parliament, national politics. I'm talking about Russia, perhaps Ukraine as well. But I was always interested in the local because I think that's where stuff happened happens. That's where the most important kind of shoots and roots of democracy appear. And over the years, I was very uh, depressed to observe that in Russia, you know, the country of my specialism, you know, local freedoms, local democracy has gone completely downhill. But even so, local governments can, even in a ghastly autocracy like Russia, there are still little shoots, little islands of sort of local opposition that can play a very important role for national politics as well. And I was very uh, enthusiastic and very uh, pleased to see how local decentralization reforms in Ukraine were going ahead. Tim Timothy mentioned that, you know, I analyzed the first local elections and it was very exciting. They were properly competitive and, and certainly something that hopefully will, will keep developing as, you know, as Ukraine leaves this war past. Uh, it. Second aspect I wanted to highlight, and that is also something I studied as an academic, um, um, as a scholar, is the role of external aid and transnational society and external governments in helping making bridges to local communities and local uh, authorities. And this is something I actually started as an academic. And I remember reading literature on sort of Western aid to Russian municipalities. It was very, a lot of it was very damning saying, well, you know, a lot of these aid initiatives, they're about talk shops and sort of workshops and all this doesn't achieve anything or the, the aid that is provided is a drop in the bucket. It's only a couple of thousand euros here and there. What I actually found in my research that for a local community, even getting something like in the 1990s, for instance, or early 2000s, a printer or modern equipment, which is indeed a couple of thousand euros, can make a massive difference. And I'm thinking now with all the Russian propaganda, even simple infusion of resources for, you know, printing those um, countering disinformation kind of campaigns, leaflets or something like that, that could make a massive difference. So actually what I found was that even these workshops and little forums, they have 
kind of very long-term consequences because people break, build a dialogue, they build a network of connections. And I hope that with the forum we have today, that will also continue. And finally, the third uh, point I wanted to make, and that is again, based on my own experience, what we as Western academics can do. I think that is very important now that Ukraine has made a bid to the European Union, and that's very exciting. But even before that, over the years, I have worked with the EU as a consultant together with Ukrainian uh, scholars and researchers like Svetlana Slava from Dr. Svetlana Slava from the University of Ushkorod. We worked together because the EU was very interested to uh, know how they can help develop local governance and local democracy in, in Ukraine. And as a Western academic, I, you know, it, it kind of, I didn't quite appreciate it, how much the Ukrainian partners appreciate being uh, listed as co-authors on publications and consultancy reports um, um, that, that come out of these initiatives because they are equal participants in the research. They should be credited. So it's not even about financial infusion. It's about recognizing an, a, a, you know, the Ukrainian academic community who work on local governments. And, and I think these opportunities will be coming. There will be more of them as sort of this um, consideration of, you know, how to bring Ukrainian laws in line with EU legislation. Um, you know, that will be going ahead. And we as academics should really continue to build bridges with our Ukrainian, um, you know, scholars and local practitioners. So I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely agree. Civil society matters and agency and mutual respect and recognition also matters a lot. So we will have about 15 minutes after the official end of our panel. So we will end our panel in one, two minutes, but then those people who would like to, they can stay to ask questions. Yeah, it's, it's only for those who, who want to stay. And we still have a final uh, you know, remarks by Jonathan Carves. Jonathan, if you can just uh, use this minute to wrap up and to say uh, basically whatever you want to say to support Ukraine, but sure. please, the floor is yours. So, I mean, firstly, just on behalf of, uh, of local governments in the UK, just to express our support and our solidarity to, to our colleagues uh, in Ukraine, I think, yeah, and how sorry we are that they're having to live through this, through this act of, of unprovoked um, criminal aggression. I think it's a reminder for all of us how precious local democracy is, um, how fragile it can be, how we shouldn't take it for granted. Um, local government in the UK can do practical things to help. Um, it can coordinate humanitarian aid. It can welcome uh, refugees. It can ensure that it divests from uh, its investments from Russia, whether that's energy contracts or, or pension funds. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that our member councils across the UK are doing all of those things. But more important than all of that, perhaps, it, it, it is, uh, and this reflects what Juliana and Valentina and others were saying, is, is that we can maintain a political discourse, telling the truth about what's happening in Ukraine, countering misinformation, engaging with our population to kind of steal them to support the Ukrainian people o over the long term. Uh, and I think that's, it, it's that discursive political element that's almost more important than anything else. Uh, and I think finally, we can we can honor the, the struggle of the Ukrainian people by just ensuring that we live our democratic values every single day and never allow ourselves to take local democracy for granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we still have time, about 15 minutes, uh, dedicated to questions and answers to those who want to stay. There were quite a lot of questions in the Q&A chat, but we were typing our answers so you can read them. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's open the, the floor. I see one hand, uh, one raised hand by Victoria Dobzik. Uh, so I'm not sure, Victoria, do you want to type in your question? I'm not sure if, if we can uh, uh, allow you to speak in this mode. Uh, well, Victoria, if you want to ask something, please type it in Q&A. Um, oh, there is a question in the chat. Okay, so let me wrap up. So there are quite a lot of questions. 
Some questions are about staying in touch with you, and I think it's absolutely possible. We will be happy to share our contacts so you can stay in touch with us and help us. Many people are asking questions about support to um, children, women, and um, uh, people who are at risk. Uh, however, our panelists already addressed this question. And there is one question which I believe was not really addressed. And this question is about international NGOs, such as Red Cross, for instance, or UNICEF working in Ukraine. So do you have any problems, issues, or any comment about the work of these organizations? Are they helping? Can we help them to help you, etc.? And Maria, I, I see you, you want to answer. Maria, please. Yes, uh, our NGO, Poruch, uh, we cooperate with Red Cross. And uh, we have uh, already uh, several trucks uh, uh, to Mykolaiv, and we tried to send uh, to hot points like uh, um, Kharkiv uh, and uh, Mykolaiv. Uh, and uh, we have really good cooperation, and uh, sometimes uh, we have lack of petrol or lack of money for petrol. <laughs> but uh, it, 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 this organization, uh, start working uh, really good and cooperate with NGO uh, so much. So uh, it's very, very important. Uh, if I may, just to clarify, is it the Ukrainian Red Cross or is it the International Red Cross? The question is about international organizations. So Maria, do you cooperate with the Ukrainian branch of the Red Cross or do you cooperate with the International uh, Red Cross Committee? Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, um, Maria, the question is, uh, are you working with the Ukrainian Red Cross or international Red Cross? Due to our uh, international partners, uh, we work with international Red Cross. But drivers sometimes uh, could be from Ukraine. And the problems with drivers is that sometimes uh, uh, this is girls who, who can <laughs> take uh, trucks, uh, he he heavy uh, things in trucks and to, to put it to the other trucks, Ukrainian trucks. Uh, so uh, uh, mostly we work, uh, we, 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 it's international Red Cross. Yeah, thank you. There are also, there is a question about uh, potential risk of dropping attention to what is happening right now in Ukraine. But I think that uh, Jonathan, he already addressed this question quite eloquently. Yes, yeah, so this is our, goal now and this is goal of all of our partners you know to to speak up and to to provide political discourse so there is no fatigue and there is honest uh, conversation about that so um let me also say a few words on behalf of my organization because quite a lot of you in the chat are asking about what can you do practically to support ukraine and you know uh, christina and uh, uliana they they all said that you can send humanitarian support, you can send it individually, you can donate to organizations. Uh, there were a lot of strong voices uh, today saying that you can also support our military. We understand that, you know, uh, as members of civil society, usually uh, civil society does not like to support military, but you can still influence your politicians to demand for this support. And as individuals and organizations, you can always help us with humanitarian aid. Uh, just to give you an example, all these municipalities, they receive humanitarian uh, help. Ukrainian Red Cross and UNICEF can help. International Red Cross can help. Our own organization, Kiev School of Economics, we launched our donation campaign as well. And we already raised $12 million internationally. And we spend it to buy and to um, deliver medical kits, medical kits, helmets, and bulletproof vests. This is very important to save lives of civilians as well, because civilians are not protected. They need helmets and medical kits, but also to save life of territorial defense. And, you know, I will, it's my opinion. I, I'm sorry if I'm not a bit emotional and maybe not very um, diplomatic here. But we have witnessed some sort of a logistical problem. A lot of people try to help Ukraine and they send, you know, small 
individual support, but then all these small things are stacked in warehouses. Yeah, we cannot deal with this logistically. It's very important to deliver in big bulks. Yeah, we need big bulks of helmets, medical kit, and other supplies. And Ukrainians on the ground, they know how to do it. We have local organizations, local NGOs, and local city mayors who know how to do it. So if you look in whom to help, you should address local organizations first. And I see Maria raising her hand. It's very, it's very important uh, to have communication. We, we can make, make communication directly. For example, our NGO, NGO Poruch, we were supported uh, by uh, Malmo University. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, collect some of money which was uh, spending to petrol for uh, Red Cross, uh, to different things, uh, 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 organs things. For example, what is important that the international organizations such as UN Women, uh, for example, they did rebudgeting. For example, we our organization were provided gender policy in Ministry of Regional Development. They did rebudgeting, and this money going to psychological support uh, in Kiev. We worked with Kiev administration, and uh, uh, simply uh, our psychologists uh, uh, each day working with people who are underground. Uh, mostly, this is old people who were removed from special building, uh, special service centers. So uh, also we, we should pay attention. Thank you for the question about the children. You see that um, this question should be solved uh, uh, regarding my son's uh, all time walking here. Uh, and we start uh, to do online uh, support with mental health for, for children. And um, uh, it's very important uh, uh, to pay attention uh, to kids and uh, to start finally uh, uh, working at schools where it's possible, because uh, mostly parents uh, could be uh, employed and uh, be busy with with their things. So uh, it will be really good to, to pay attention. And uh, also, I would like to pay attention one more time because it's very important uh, for um, uh, for us uh, as a civil society organizations that we communicate with. Uh, uh, central government directly. So we are like bridge between fields and uh, uh, between central government. So uh, we can do all possible and even impossible things. So uh, just contact uh, to us directly. Um, I'm not asking for, the, for, for donation, but yes, it's really good when we have, uh, you know, uh, some of money for urgent questions because uh, uh, you know um, each day and each hour or 30 minutes and uh, appear new problems and uh, we should uh, react very fast. Uh, for example, I know that uh, we have representative from UK and uh, we have uh, in, in invitation uh, uh, from uh, uh, government organization to take part uh, in discussion which will take place uh, 6th of April. You know, we should do work right now, not not in one week, not in two weeks. And if you can support, just support right now. Yeah, this is, I concur, this is absolutely important. And I see that Valentina uh, raised her hand. Uh, Valentina, we want to say something? I want to say something about the initiative яку наша асоціація започаткувала, ми її назвали громади громадам в Україні. Like briefly an initiative which our association um, founded it's it's called the uh, municipality for municipalities in Ukraine. На Західній Україні, в регіонах Західної України дуже багато накопичилося гуманітарної допомоги. Але логістика не наскільки досконала, тому е, ми поєднуємо адресно громади громадам, е, готові переміщати е, цю гуманітарну допомогу. There is a huge amount of humanitarian aid that has been uh, accumulated on the, in the western regions of the country, but the logistics is not always there, it's not always very good. Um, so yeah, we are trying to uh, make sure that there the, the, the help is being sent from one to the other municipality. І ми до, до, до фронту так наближ, наближаємо ці гуманітарні грузи, 
а деякі громади ризикують, знаходять якісь дороги, щоб виїхати і взяти цю допомогу. So, um, uh, yeah, in order to get to those most hot zones, um, a lot of municipalities are actually taking a, a risk to send to organize a logistical uh, channel into really like the, the hot uh, uh, military zones. Це такий рух, знаєте, самих громад, і його підтримують сьогодні і наші партнери SKL International, проект ONG, і швейцарська агенція. Тому ми дуже вдячні за цю за підтримку цих ініціатив. And this initiative is supported by the SKL International um... Uh, and also by the UN Women and by uh, Switzerland, and we would like to thank them for uh, for making this uh, possible. І, мабуть, дійсно те, що говорили і в цемрі зараз активізується оці партнерства європейських громад і українських, то, мабуть, це також отака адресна підтримка і взаємодія. Ну. Це, це, це теж дуже важливо. Треба розвивати. And what was also said by the speaker from the CMR, the indeed this direct uh, city, uh, city to city municipality to municipality um, uh, help uh, and cooperation um, communication is really very important and it needs to continue being developed. Так, Валентина, дуже дякую. Thank you, Valentina. I see, uh, well, everyone wants to say something, Jana, Uliana, Christina. So, uh, yeah, please, I think it's a good time for you to raise your concerns, uh, but try to be brief so everyone can have time to speak what they want to say. Okay, so Jana. Thank you. No, I just wanted to uh, um, indeed reiterate uh, what was said uh, already by speakers, that indeed now is the, really the time to uh, reactivate the city-to-city partnerships and, and contacts that have been created over the many, many years. But many of these twinnings and other things, they were not active, honestly speaking, the vast majority of them, there were no activities happening and things like this. But this is really a time to encourage towns, mayors, regions, cities in the European Union, in the UK and outside to reach directly, to call their partners, their sister towns. If there was a joint European project they were involved in, uh, cross-national, cross-border, transnational cooperation projects, really uh, take time and effort to call directly and ask what their partner need is, uh, needs. If the language is an issue, which is always is a challenge and why these partnerships have died in the past, there is a now, uh, you know, you can reach out through the Association of Ukrainian Cities that will, uh, or other associations that have English speakers there that can ha- be a channel of communication on, or help. You can reach out to a CMR. You can reach out to the ULID with Europe program as well, or some other international donors. Um, and, If you want to have uh, to give concrete help, uh, language shouldn't be an issue. There are ways now to go around to be able to provide really this direct help uh, which is needed. If you need contacts in Ukraine, if you don't have partners, if you don't, if you have never worked with anyone in Ukraine before, this shouldn't stop you because again, you can reach out to the associations that are working on the ground in Ukraine and say, we don't have the partners, but we would like to help someone. Please help us identify uh, where, who we can help and how we can uh, uh, help directly. So it's really a time now to establish Uh, links and partnerships that might not have been there before, but also to uh, to re-energize uh, those uh, partnerships and those links that might have been there, uh, but haven't been active. Uh, and this, and this is really uh, this is really really important uh, because uh, going through some third organization, including big internationals, um, unfortunately, the help not always reaches especially a small uh, communities uh, the help does not always reach there and also um, for example as one of the mayor told me uh, they received some help external help and 30 of the things they received was actually not needed and it took them a long time just to uh, sort it out uh, to get it out from the trucks and logistics 
is now precious and gold. So when a mayor sends a truck to pick up humanitarian aid and 30% of the things that has been sent by someone who hasn't contacted the mayor before to ask what is needed, when this truck arrives and 30% of the things, I'm sorry to say this, but it's sort of like uh, trash and uh, unneeded, is a huge huge uh, disappointment for the for the uh, for the mayor for the locals and it's really uh, a waste of their precious time and energy that is very uh, is very important now um, so it's really important to know the needs and to be in direct contact absolutely thank you this is very important what you just said about logistics and you know i'm a researcher i i, I can i'm not a politician i can allow myself to be not a diplomatic person at all, I can raise even more issues here. Not all money will go to Ukraine, uh, not to mention that they have very long chain of command, boards, board approvals, uh, you know, their representatives, they usually travel to Ukraine, they book very expensive hotels, etc, etc. I don't think that you want to spend money on that. I think it's much better to spend money directly on uh, humanitarian support on the ground. Yeah, and uh, Uliana and Christina. So Uliana, please. Um, uh, Thank you very much. I just wanted to add that um, I would like this uh, panel discussion would be a first step in our communication in uh, support uh, of. Ukrainian cities, municipalities. So um, my contacts uh, as a Lviv city councillor uh, are uh, opened and I will wait for uh, direct calls, messages. So for example, um, three days before war, I returned back from the United States and then it was uh, like special program, changing pro program, and people from uh, United States today, uh, whom we met there, uh, try to help Ukraine. And it is um, wonderful that people try to help other people, that cities help cities. So thank you very much. And we are waiting for um, next communication, for next support, and Thank you very much, but yes, um, uh, as Jana said, it would be better at first to communicate with us, to take information what is needed, and then to try to find everything. So yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Liana. Christina. And also I want to support uh, Valentina's uh, words about a uh, humanitarian hub, uh, for example, in the, uh, like an example in our city, it was created a humanitarian hub uh, because it's more or less safety territory. And we accept almost, I think, 200,000 tons uh, per week. And we separate and divided these humanitarian cargos into different parts and uh, transfer it to Kyiv, to Kherson, to Kharkiv, to all the territories which which need this. Uh, so we provide all our list of needs with via needs as well, with the needs of uh, these territory who are in more uh, difficult conditions now. So uh, to continue, my colleague Uliana, please contact us and uh, we will provide you, we, Uliana, and all our Western regions, uh, local council. We will provide all the list of needs because it's not all. It's not only our list of needs. List of needs of Ukrainian people of Ukrainian nation. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for uh, making it very clear. And uh, you know we are running out of time. It is a very important discussion. But you know, as uh, Maria said, time is scarce and precious, and we need to go back and to work to support Ukrainians. I'd like to ask Anna Maria. Um, to conclude this session with uh, her um, closing remarks. Thank you, Timothy, and I want to thank you all. And I feel so empowered also by seeing these five uh, very brave women here. It was uh, by chance, actually. We didn't uh, on purpose try to get women, but it, it really shows the strong role of Ukrainian women uh, fighting and trying their best for the local governments. I want to 
thank Jonathan also for the support of your organization. And I really want to join your suggestions of the things and action points that we can do. And as I said, I have emailed everybody that attended this panel and seminar. You have my contact information. If there is anything that you after today felt inspired to do, please contact me and we will facilitate these connections and we will continue to create these uh, corridors of humanitarian support, corridors of solidarity. Uh, I think this is a, a message for hope and for action. Uh, as Jana said as well, this is the time to really bring up these partnerships with the local governments, with the local community. And I also want to thank uh, Timothy uh, for being here and just say uh, thank you to everybody that also took the time, one and a half hours almost to listen here. Uh, and I will continue my day here with um, <laughs> Maria together. and her son and from the city of Malmo continue uh, to work and engage with our local government here to see what we can do and with ICLD. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.